Hello everyone, this is Coretta once again with another uh, of my creations. This time it's this little robot guy. I've been working on this guy for quite a while and um, I've gone through about... Th I think this is the third iteration of this robot that I've gone through. Um, I've done a couple changes to, to him versus the, the previous one. And uh, as a matter of fact, I should probably bring that one out. One second. Also, if you think that everything sounds kind of breezy, it's because everything's kind of breezy. Um, it's a nice windy day today, so yeah. Anyway, here we go. These are my previous incarnations. This is the first version. This one's printed in Frosted Ultra Detail. And I liked it because the arms and legs were actually printed in one piece like this. So, I mean, the only thing that had to be assembled was, I think, the back of the head, this back section, and then putting this in here and putting these in the sides here. So, these joints here were actually printed in place, as were the knees. And uh, I think this part here as well, yeah. The problem with that is that it makes him very floppy and he doesn't really stand up because, well, the joints don't have enough friction to hold him up with. So, I went to the small business boot camp, saw this guy named Christian Brock that had like a bunch of really cool robots and I thought, hey, his robots actually stand up. What's he doing differently? Well, he actually has snap fit joints on his, so I decided, hey, let me use the snap fit joints. Those actually sort of kind of work. So I did, and then I created this guy. And lo and behold, he actually stands up. Woohoo! There he is. Hi. He was actually at the 3D print show in New York um, a couple weeks back. So um, he's a little bit dirty and smudgy in places. You can see there's some dirt there. Now the whole point of me making these robots was for them to be wired up to um, have LEDs and stuff like that inserted. Which you can see this one with a janky wiring that's currently shorting out and makes him look like a psychotic and a little mini Ultron or something like that. So anyway, I've decided to make some changes to this guy here. Um, I did two tests with the, the knee joints, for example. You can see this one has this like kind of spur on it here in the middle, so it kind of stops his knee from going all the way forward. I did something different over here. I put like a kneecap on the actual ball section of the joint, which does work. However, if you keep pushing on this, that little nub just acts like a little leverage and then pops the leg right off. So I kind of don't like that design, so I decided to stick with the design on here, which is also the design that I used for the elbows back here. I ordered two of these guys, but I only got one. Shapeways reprinted it, but I had it sent to my uncle's house in Florida where I was gonna hang out for a couple of days before coming back to Jamaica. And it arrived on the same day I was leaving. However, it arrived at the house while I was on the tarmac in the airplane at the airport. So I still don't have it. I am sad. I'd like to assemble this guy today and see what manner of uh, how my adjustments actually um, came out. Now, it's been in my suitcase for a while, so a lot of the parts have like detached themselves from their sprues and stuff like that. So, um, and um, there's something else in this bag that I'll tell you about in, in a while. So you, you hold on to this bag over here. As a matter of fact, both of you. Why is there a truck? Why is it making noise? So this is kind of how the robot parts come. They're attached to these sprues and stuff. And like I said, they've been in my bag for a while. So a lot of them have detached. And um, well, they're not too hard to take apart. I mean, you just twist the sprues and the pieces and um, they kind of pop right out. Ooh, there's a lot of little, stop it. Stop making tooting truck noises. There's a lot of um, the print powder still stuck in here. Now, one of the first things I like to do is try to clean out the uh, print, the powder out of the uh, little nooks and crannies and crevices. This can take a while and really and honestly, I should have these soaked in water because that is the best way. Because now I have these little dabs of powder everywhere that looks like I was snorting coke. I don't know how to do this. I only see this on TV. 
So yeah, yeah. Now we'll snort that up and uh, look like we have a drug operation. Let me get something like a damp towel that I can actually wipe this up with, because this is gonna be everywhere, mostly in my lungs where I don't want it to be. Because really and truly, I just want to see how these pieces fit and if there's any changes that I have to do. So this has already been separated, and uh, the piece to go onto that is this jaw piece right here. So again, I can just detach that pretty easily, pop the screw off. You don't want to break these because those are what holds it to the back of his head. The jaw snaps in like so. You have the one side here and the other side here. And oh, that is perfect. I like that. So I've assembled this and uh, the next piece to go on would be the back of the head here. Right? And that goes in like that. So that's his head put together. Uh, next thing we want to do is go for his torso area. And I just want to twist this off, twist this off. I like that the sprues come off pretty easily. And oh, well, those separated pretty nicely. Uh, I'll just pop these off here with my X-Acto blade. I was looking at the design of this and I feel like I should be able to hollow this out some more. And because this piece is pretty solid except for this little indentation right here and technically I should be able to hollow this out and make it so that it costs less to print and I'm gonna go put this in the back so this section goes into here and I've also made it so that this is a little bit tighter to turn which uh, I think is good so this is his crotch bit that's gonna point forward this is the back uh, we line the posts up with these two holes in here and just push down. And that's assembled there. Perfect. Now we get to his arms and legs. Now, here's where I think I have to do a little bit of redesigning because right now these sections here, there's no way to really tell them the front different from the back. And um, there are differences, but they're very, very subtle. So let me just twist this guy off right here. This side is lower. Let me try and angle it towards the camera so you can see. This side is lower than this side. So this side should be facing the body. So this pops into here like so. Ah, that's uncharacteristically loose. Um, the other thing that I can do sometimes is if I just squeeze these these spurs in towards each other That kind of helps. I think I may have broken this one a bit Hmm That's strange because this is supposed to have a lot more fl flexibility to it. So uh, Let me see put this here Let's See what this one is like Yeah, these are pretty loose and I have no idea why huh. Uh, now these ones are for the arms These are for the upper arms and this side is a little bit lower than that side So this is the side that faces the body and this is also loose very strange Very very strange indeed. Uh, this is the side that's lower than the other side. So this part goes here There we go Right now let's get to his lower limbs Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that this is as loose as it is. They were perfect before because like on this guy it's the same design but you can see it's a little bit it's a little bit stiffer on this one. Let's continue shall we? And this is why I like to do these tests before actually selling them because I feel I'm very very weirded out by selling things to people if I don't think they work or I'm not comfortable with them. Yeah, all of these ball joints feel a whole lot floppier than the last set. And I don't understand why, because this one has, like, almost no grip. I mean, look at the way it's flopping around. Like, his leg is just flopping around, which it shouldn't do. This one is, like, nice and rigid. And this one goes in here. Um, okay. So he gets assembled like so. I can't even get him to stand up, which I'm pretty sad about. Let me see something here, because if I put these onto here, 
Oh, these are fine on here. It's like the ball sections of this got shrunk. So let's do this. Let's do this. And let's pull this little thing off and this little thing off. And um, before I assemble this, I'm going to try and pull out any little material that's in here. So this one goes here. This is also floppy, so I, 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 I'm not going to be able to pose him the way I wanted because everything's flopping around. I'm a little bit sad actually, I don't know. Like this guy is much more posable. Let me see something here. If I take his arm and put it on here. Yeah, it's also, it's like the ball sections got polished or something. You can feel that there's, you can actually rock the joints back and forth and you can feel that there's definitely a lot of play around it. Last but not least is his hair. I used a different style of hair with him this time. I gave this guy a mohawk and it goes on like so. Yay! So he's put together but he can barely stand up because stuff and things and semantics and 3D printing being unpredictable. Design-wise, I am much, much happier. Uh, I don't know if the, the light is kind of not making him very visible, so I'm casting a shadow. Design-wise, I'm very much more liking this guy because I had the square toes on this guy and I was thinking, ah, the square toes don't fit the rest of him. But these sort of rounded ones fit the design a whole lot better, so I'm happy with that. And this is where I decided I'm going to make some adjustments. One, I need to find a way to easily point out to people where is the front and back and which side of this is the left and the right, right? That's number one. The second thing is, the whole point of designing this guy was to make him so that I could wire him up with LEDs, like this guy, you know, with the janky wiring. But um, I came across an issue. Part of it is that the wire is supposed to run up his neck to the eye LEDs. Now currently his head is made so it can rotate all the way around. The problem is if you run a wire up behind, um, up inside the neck and you do this, you're going to eventually end up popping the connection because there's only so much it can twist before the wires disconnect themselves. So I think I need to make a mechanism by which his head can only turn like 180 degrees and then stop. And um, yeah, I think those are the only two adjustments I need to make. Delineating the left from the right of these upper arm and upper leg pieces and making his head not rotate all the way around. So stuff and everything is loose, even the co connections here. Because usually like on this guy, his hair connection is pretty tight. Like I have to like wiggle this one out. This is super tight. This is loose, everything is loose, but the posts that are holding the front and the back of this together are tight as hell. Now I'm gonna go to the last thing, which is this thing in the back. What is this, you ask? Remember, I said I wanted this to be wired up with a switch, wires, batteries, and an LED. But what if you get this robot and you don't want to do all of that? Then you end up with this giant hole in the back. Well. This is a little backpack that you can use to put into said hole. It's got these like little prong things and they just kind of slide in theory. They slide into here and now he's got a little sort of wing backpack thing and you should be able to just pull it back off. So if at some point in a later date you decide you do want to wire him up, he can be disassembled and this stuff can be put in. So yeah. Well, I'll see you guys uh, I'll see you guys another time with another video and hopefully the next time I print this guy he won't be so fluffy. So um, thanks for joining me on this ride. I'll see you again next time. Peace. I'm so fluffy. Fluffy. Hello again. I decided I'd do a little follow-up video, uh, a little part two to this video and show you something. This is the same robot, but do you notice something?
I can pose him now. His mouth is still open. Shut your mouth. Yeah. This is the same robot I assembled. Oop, I jawed the camera a bit. This is the same robot I assembled yesterday and it was very floppy. Now I can pose him. Christian Brock gave me a great idea to fix the joints and that is with school glue. Ignore the price tag, that is in Jamaican dollars, not in US dollars. It's 125 Jamaican dollars, which is probably like a dollar 25 or something like that. Yeah, regular old school glue. He said, if you have school glue, apply it to the ball joint and to the inside of the socket, and it should create a bit of, a, of more grip for it to, to hold, you know, these joints into place. I mean, it's not a perfect solution, but it is a great solution if that's the way your model has come and um, there's nothing else that you can do. So big shout out to Christian Brock for giving me that tip and having me fix my robot because I was about to go into a corner and sulk that um, my robot came out so floppy the way it did. So um, I just wanted to point out that and show you guys this, uh, this fix. So if you have any loose parts and you want to do that, Regular school glue on the parts will help make it a little bit more rigid, okay? Peace out.